Hello, my name is Sai, and today I'll be teaching you how to create your own depth map and what effects you can create using depth maps in DaVinci Resolve. I'm currently using DaVinci Resolve uh, 17, and the tutorial won't require Studio. So first we're going to start by finding the frame that uh, you want to mask out and create a depth map for, and we're going to freeze it using the speed change tab, uh, and then we're going to extend it out right here and make it like one like one second or 24 frames depending on the frame rate of your timeline i'm going to grab a fusion comp and drag the fusion comp on the timeline we're going to open it into fusion and drag it into our, from our media pool the clip that we froze and connect it to our media out and then we're going to start by grabbing a uh, polygon mask and naming it character one or just whatever character um whatever you want to name it if you know the character's name that also works uh, and I'm just going to mask this real quick. Um, I'm going to just like keep it organized and stuff. Uh, so now we have all the characters masked out. We can grab a background node and drag the first character mask into the background node on the effect masks mask option. Uh, I'm just going to keep it white because the white level is the like fully lit up luminance value. I guess I don't know how else to describe it. So basically like it'll select that area. Now we're also going to grab a multi-merge uh, node from Reactor. I can link that in the description um, and how to download that. I think Peach has a video on it. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm just going to gradient right here um, and kind of just make it look not white but not black but not exactly gray so it kind of levels out. Um, and I kind of noticed I picked up the mask a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to fix this for a little bit. Um, after I fix that, I'm just going to mess around more with the uh, gradient and get it to my liking. And then basically you just do the same thing with all the other character masks and then put that onto the multi-merge but make sure that your first the first object that you want like in front of everything else is at the last input of the multi-merge otherwise it'll go underneath some of the other background nodes um, and not look right basically Okay, now that we have all the masks like masks out and stuff, um, I added a background node because you need the background to be black. 
uh, I'm going to start by adding a color corrector node and dragging the uh, output of the color corrector node into the garbage mat and have the background input be the media in and then it, you'll see it'll mask out um, what's selected of, from the color corrector node uh, and we're going to go to the color corrector node and go to the levels menu and start messing around with the levels and as you can see if I drag the black uh, and all the way to the end, it makes everything basically disappear. It's because it's making the masks basically just all black. Um, and remember, white is the selection and black is the deselected area. Um, so we're going to start by keyframing the beginning of the clip and then the end of the clip. And make the end of the clip have the white levels go all the way up. And the black levels like maybe three-fourths of the way up. Um, and then just have, or just have it all the way down, it kind of depends. Um, and we'll kind of have this weird like fade in kind of look um, but it's not exactly like uh, it doesn't look exactly like how you would want it to look it's not going each character at a time um, so you just want to adjust the spline a little bit and you want to make sure that the high values are always ahead of the low values because otherwise they'll kind of flip um, and it basically just does not look right it doesn't look how you want it to look um, I'm just going to keep messing around with the output level. You can kind of just mess around with this however you like. And it just the splines a little bit more. Um, as you can see here, if I make the black levels too high, on the output level it'll make uh, basically the selection like less obvious so we just want to dec decrease it and just make it basically what you want like I said before this part is really important and I forgot to say it before but um, by the histogram of the color corrector node you need to adjust the black and the gray on the graph not on the output level bar um, and it will make more of a selection under each character. So uh, next, we're going to start by uh, adding a displace node. And then we're going to grab the output from the color corrector and then put it into the foreground of the displace. Um, and then I'm going to the beginning of the keyframe. It kind of already has an animation to it a little bit because the uh, color corrector is changing on its own, like the levels, the luminance values. But we're going to keyframe the center position. Um, but you can see these little edges right here that are kind of showing where the mask is and you can increase the spread of the displace to make it disappear basically. Um, it kind of like warps it out a little bit. I'm just gonna adjust the spline of the displace to make it just look a little smoother because right now it's kind of super linear looking. Um, 
minute the Miguel looks a little smoother now um, it kind of looks like the characters are moving but in the original scene it's not really moving and right here just to make my node tree look a little bit more neat I'm gonna alt click on the like line that's connecting the two nodes together and it'll create these little blank box boxes um, they're very really useful to like organize your fusion page a little bit better Next, I'm going to grab an invert color node and drag the color corrector into the input of the invert color. Um, so it basically just inverts what the values that we already have selected are. And this is going to be like a little defocus um, blur. So right here, I'm going to grab a bitmap um, and then connect the image to the bitmap. And then it's going to be white. You're going to be like, what's going on? You just change the channel level from alpha to luminance. You can kind of mess around with the like selection if you'd like. It kind of might affect how the gradients are being selected from the bitmap, but uh, it might not matter for you. We're going to grab a defocus gamma node and then drag the bitmap output into the effect mask of the def defocus gamma. And also the defocus gamma node is from Reactor. Uh, and I'll leave a link in the description on how to download Reactor for Fusion. It's better to keyframe, start at the beginning of the fusion comp and keyframe the defocus size, um, just like whatever value you like. And then at the end of the comp, make it zero and then just kind of spline it out if you like. Um, and that's about it. 